Alright, and welcome back to uh, video 3 in this four part series uh, that covers chapter 5 dealing with uh, subtotals and pivot tables. Uh, in this particular video, we're going to look at some of the options um, that are available via pivot tables. Uh, so we're going to look at doing some, some filtering and slicing of the data in the pivot table. We're going to look at adding filters and just reviewing a, a subset of data in the pivot table um, that are applicable to the filters. And we'll find that this is very similar to using the filter functionality in the Excel spreadsheet. We're also going to look at putting a, a slicer into the table to uh, using a slicer with a pivot table uh, in order to serve as a more specific uh, quick filtering on the pivot table um, and we're also going to look at you know just some of the various manipulations you can do with the, with the slicer um, again you can you can customize the slice slicer uh, and then we're also going to look at putting a, kind of a time limit application uh, that uh, insert a timeline in here that basically just kind of uh, is, a, is another feature to uh, filter data based on a uh, specific date range. One of the other uh, uh, things that we're going to look at as well is, is uh, uh, in, in worksheets we've, we've created calculated fields. You can also uh, create a calculated field into a pivot, into a pivot table. Um, so again, this is just a user-defined defined field that, that basically uh, is value based on a specific calculation uh, based off of other uh, fields or uh, field or fields in, in the pivot table. Um, so we'll we'll go through the uh, the fields or I'm sorry the uh, the steps to go ahead and create a, a, a calculated field uh, field in the pivot table. Um, and then the last thing we'll look at is just kind of uh, pivot table style, um, applying some of the, the the different look and feel to the pivot table, and then changing um, kind of the the style of the, uh, the pivot table itself. So let's go ahead and move back to our pivot table uh, that we've been looking at uh, and working through in the previous two videos. Um, so we've got, again, we've got our, our sales uh, information. We've got it filtered, uh, broken out, sliced and diced, however you want to uh, say it, by, uh, by our sales agents. Uh, we've got the count number, the, the sum of the selling price, and some of the asking price. So one of the things you can do is, is a pivot table is, is add a filter. Um, it's very easy to add a filter if you notice over here again you've got your, your little uh, uh, quick um, pivot table fields uh, menu over here off to the right. And what you can do is you can actually um, look at, uh, you, can, you can apply a filter on uh, specific uh, information in there. So, uh, if you want to include um, some information into the, the pivot table, uh, let's just say you're looking at, uh, um, we want to look at, uh, let's take a look at the, the asking price. Let's put a filter on the asking price. So if we select and hold down our mouse on the field asking price, we drag it down here to filters, we can actually um, create this filter now based off the asking price. So if you notice up here in the first row, asking price is in there. We've got a filter for all of them. And again, if you're looking at a specific asking price you want to look at, we'll filter it on, let's say $300,000. We'll click OK. And you can actually slice and dice um, your your asking price. We can, now we have three we have three listings that uh, the asking price is three hundred thousand dollars. We can kind of look to see what's the trend based on that asking price. Uh, gives us break uh, broken out by. Um, we look at it from the sales agent. We can look at it, you know, from address. So you can kind of derive from here how, in comparison to the asking price of three hundred thousand uh, dollars, do these houses sell um, by agents? neighborhood, city, um, you can put that in there. So again, that's just kind of a, uh, a quick and easy how to add a filter. Um, you can go ahead and if you click on your filter over here again to remove it, and you can remove that field in there, and again, you've got all your information back to where it was. So again, quick and easy application of filters um, or pivot table, and again, that's just to kind of um, just give you a, a, a more a drill down look of, of the information that you're looking at. 
One of the other things that we can uh, apply into a, a pivot table is what's called a slicer. And basically a slicer is just kind of a small little window. Um, it, it creates a button um, that's unique to each item based on what you select in, in the slicer. Uh, so that again, you can filter it very quickly based off of the specific uh, value. So we go to our Analyze tab in our Pivot Tools uh, menu, and we want to insert a slicer. And, and again, we're going to look at more on um, asking price again. So let's look at asking price. And you notice you've got now this little cool little window up here. Um, that gives you a little bit of button, uh, a button in here for kind of filtering on this, um, on, on these various asking prices. Very similar to the filter function. This is just presented a little differently. Uh, gives you the ability again to kind of do more of a multi-select if you want to. If you want to look at what's the asking price, you can see the breakdown of the asking price of $300,000. Um, let's pick another round figure, four hundred thousand uh, dollars. So again, you can kind of uh, take a look and see, based off of uh, of what you're you're filtering on here, how that you know how that slicer uh, comes into comes into play uh, when you when you want to filter your filter your data and your information. So again, if you're wanting to uh, use a you know again use a, a little slicer in terms of the, the data that you're dealing with here, um, this is just another tool to kind of further further filter um, your information in uh, uh, further filter your information and how it's how it's displayed in here. Uh, so again, uh, if you right click on the the slicer, you can go in there and you can actually kind of do uh, some customizations. You can go here to the slicer settings. You could Change your 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 name of your uh, of your slicer. Uh, you can again uh, you can change how it's presented. You want it largest to smallest. You can you know you can do that uh, as well. Go in there and make the modifications that you uh, would like. Uh, click OK, and again use that to uh, to to further filter, further slice and dice your information. And as we remove our filters here, you'll notice that our uh, our data is, is, is now being modified in, uh, in the pivot table based off of that. To go ahead and remove the, uh, the, the filter, you'll see remove asking price. It's just saying remove the slicer from there and all of our data comes back to the way it was. One of the other things you can uh, create in there is you can insert a timeline. Um, you have date fields in this particular pivot table, so you can kind of look at from a timeline perspective. Let's look at it from the sale date. Uh, we're going to put this timeline in here, and let's say we want to specify periods of July. So we can look to see July based off of uh, that time frame. What was the number of houses that each um, each real estate agent sold? What was the selling the total total selling price? What was the asking price of those those particular items? So again, we've got this filter on sale date. Um, you can remove that filter, and you can. Uh, you can change it to your timeline to listing date, so you can kind of see what um, what real estate agents had what listings uh, during the various uh, various months. So you can kind of do some analytics there. So again, that's inserting a timeline into the filter table. Again, the, the dependency on that is you do have to have some sort of a date field uh, involved in your in your information. Let's go ahead and remove our timeline here. Again, right click on that particular uh, feature and remove it. Your data comes back uh, to the way it was before you use it. Uh, one of the other things you can do uh, in, in working with pivot tables is to create a calculated field. Uh, so one of the things that you can do specifically with uh, sales, real estate sales, is one of the things you can do, see what the commission is for a particular individual. Um, so again, to do that, you select it so anywhere into your pivot table. Go up here to analyze. Okay, and you're gonna click fields, items, and sets in the calculations groups. You're gonna insert a calculated field. You give your field name. So we're gonna call this commission. And then you you have 
fields available here to include in your formula. So if you notice, it starts with an equal sign. Um, again, since we're going to be doing a calculation uh, of related to commission, we're going to focus on the selling price. We're going to multiply that times 0.05, 5%. Okay. Click OK. And now what you've done is you've created a calculated field that's applied to every uh, piece of information in here. Totals the commission for each uh, sales agent. It gives a commission for each house that they sold based off of, based off of the percentage that we're, we're dealing with. Um, so again, this is uh, just another way that you can kind of manipulate or add to your data based off of um, however you need to present it. So inserting a calculated field is a good feature to, to get comfortable with using in pivot tables. Before we finish up with the, this section, I want to cover, uh, just kind of want to quickly um, cover some pivot table design. Uh, very similar to some of the other design enhancements that we've made. Um, in our Excel worksheets, uh, you can apply various uh, pivot table designs to your pivot table. Um, so you can select based off of the three assessed, um, well, three formatted styles here. And you can create banded rows. You can have banded columns if you want. Again, just various features that you can use to change the pivot table design. Uh, so again, the, the key pieces in this particular section, uh, again, is, is creating filters, adding filters, creating a slicer, uh, knowing the difference between how those two work, uh, working through creating a calculated field, and then applying your, uh, your styles and layouts to the pivot table itself. So this should go ahead and get you all squared away uh, with everything that you need to complete on hand exercise number three. Uh, that begins on page 364, and if you have any questions, 